Despite the rise of digital music streaming and downloads, radio isn't dead, at least not yet. So in certain markets like the US and Europe, radio placements are some of the main drivers of fan interest in music. Before deciding which stations you want your music played, let's go over different types of stations. Non-commercial stations. These are called non-coms, which we like. Non-coms don't have any commercials, hence the name. Non-commercial stations do not depend on business. This means they are more responsive to the needs of their audiences. Why is that important? It's important because people listen to music because they love it, while commercial sponsors want to dumb it down so they can sell their products. Student-run non-commercial stations. More and more of these stations are available online, which is a great place to find music. At the University of Washington, for example, there's the news and information station KUOW. But students can listen to the great student-run station Rainy Dog Radio, which is only available online. These stations need your music, and the people who work there are often the nicest you'll meet. Should you just ignore these stations and not send them your music? No, they want to hear your music. Do it for them and for yourself. Commercial stations. Don't send your music to commercial stations just because you think they might like it. Most likely, they don't even want to hear your music, let alone play it on their station. Even if they did, it wouldn't matter much anymore unless you were on their tiny list of added music, in which case you'd be played like 50 times a week, making it hard to listen. They play the same song 50 times a week on commercial stations. But even in the commercial radio desert, there are some good DJs and shows. Most of the time, these shows are on Sunday nights, so check each station's schedule to see what's going on that night. How come Sunday night? That's one of the nights when people listen to commercial radio the least. Awesome, right? Well, no. But I did host a local show on one of our commercial stations on Sunday nights for a few years, and it was great to introduce kids to music they wouldn't hear on the station otherwise. This can sometimes also lead to a lot of airplay. Most of the time, these shows are hosted by someone at the station who really cares about new and independent music. They are your best bet for getting your music played. But just like college DJs, they don't get enough credit or help. Good programmers are doing their best to get good music on the air at the moment. Most of the time, there will be two different shows, a local show and a show about new music. Find out which show is which and send the message to the right place. Some also have shows about things like singer-songwriters, metal, hip-hop, etc. If you fit into one of their categories, you should definitely try it. This could be your only chance to get on the stations, so find the host, make friends, and send in your music. Change starts on the inside. Why send your music? So why send your music to the radio? That's a big question. Do you just want your band to play on the radio? Do you want to find out if your band was played on the radio? Are you going to visit the cities where your band is playing? Is this just what you do when you put out a record? All of these are good things to ask yourself. As a band or artist, you should have a mission statement and goals, so you can always answer these questions. It will make things clearer and easier to understand. I'll be honest, if you want airplay to make a big difference in your sales, it won't. To be honest, you probably won't make money as an artist, not in terms of selling music. You might sell more if you send it to radio stations and tour with it. If your band is already well known, submitting to stations will increase sales. But it's hard to explain how connecting with a station affects sales. Think of it as advertising for your brand and your tours. And if you think it will help both, then do it. Remember that there are only three ways to make money. Touring, merchandise, placement of music. There could be more. Could vinyl be the fourth? If you have access to vinyl pressing services, you should take advantage of it. After all, vinyl is the new cool nowadays. It will save the independent music scene. Plus, you get to hold your own record in your hands. If you don't plan to go on tour, make sure that the stations in your hometown get your release. If you're a band or artist who can play shows in your own town and nearby towns, 
make sure that the record is available everywhere you go. Who to send it to and what to send. Formats for media are always changing. That's just the way the industry is. Most stations have an MD, which stands for Music Director, and not to be confused for a medical doctor. It will be hard to get their attention if you are a small band or a new band. There are also specialty shows on stations, and a core group of programmers usually mix the music. All of them should get music, but for many stations, the MD is the one who makes the final decision. What should I send? Artists should send a streaming link, a download link, and a link to any videos. Then, those folks over at the station check the streaming links to see if they like it. If it's a yes, they have the download link readily available to download. If they're thinking about putting the artist on video, it's a good idea to show any visuals. This would help the live show, which could help you get a session on video. Is it okay to send a demo? Is it okay to send something without artwork, etc., like a demo? If the station knows who you are and what you do and you are trying to get them your music early, then yes. If they don't know who you are from Adam, you might want to clean up a bit. If you ask radio DJs, they'll say that most of the time they can tell just by looking at a record how it will sound and if it's any good. Should I send a one sheet? This is a must have and is exactly what it says. A single page document that says everything that needs to be known about you. This is a brief description of what you're sending and why. Think of it as a job application. If your resume were bad, do you think you'd get the job? Don't use two sheets. Most people don't read past the first page. Let's go over what else to include. A song list. Make a list of songs that are not FCC friendly, like songs with bad language. They can't be played in the daytime. List the go-to songs, which means pick your best two or three songs. Quotes. Include any quotes you have. How can you get quotes if no one has heard what you want to quote? Get it to friends, bookers, managers, or anyone else in the business who can give you a good and honest quote. Signposts. Who could you be like or who do you sound like? Beyonce or Drake? Don't set your sights so high. Instead, look for cool artists or indie bands in your genre that sound similar to you. You could also add something about the genre. In conclusion, don't overpack with too much information. Get to the point and keep it clean and simple. How to follow up to your submission. Do not assume that your music is guaranteed airtime just because you have submitted it to the radio station. Wait at least two weeks after sending it before you call or send an email to follow up. Do not write the DJ to ask about it on the air. DJs typically receive many requests per show. Do not assume that DJs don't receive music from other artists. They are also busy professionals too. Also, do not contact the DJs when they are on the air. Just check in with the MT or send the DJ an email when they're not on the air. There are music hours for music directors. You can usually find this information on a station's website or you can give them a call. They usually only happen one or two days a week for a few hours each, so give it a try then. Most DJs don't have set hours, so you should email them. Patience is key. Keep trying, and when you finally get through, be nice and direct to the point. Let's go over some good questions to ask. Did you get that CD or the music link from that record label or artist? Did you get a chance to look at so-and-so? Are you going to start doing so-and-so? Where will you add so-and-so to your lineup? Do you need anything else? If any of the answers are no, stop asking and tell them to have a nice day. Most stations have a rotating system with heavy, medium, and light. If you're put into any of these categories of rotation, that's good news because it means you're getting airplay. At this point, Thank the music director and let them know you'll be calling back later to see how the record is doing and where it is charting. Follow up for the next six to eight weeks, which is how long a new release lasts in rotation. Or if you prefer, you can keep an eye on the playlist on the station's website. Music requests. Share the list of radio stations that are playing your CD with your fans. 
Make sure they don't send too many requests or get angry that your song isn't getting played more often. Extreme requests from fans won't get your band more airplay, as DJs can easily identify when they're being inundated with them. Wide-scale advertising. Is that sounding like a lot of effort to you? It is. Consider getting some outside aid. You may find a number of excellent radio promotion firms that focus on assisting artists in gaining national radio play. They charge an average of $500 to $2,000 to service 300 to 750 stations. Sending out CDs and promotional mailings to radio stations will cost you in postage and lost CDs. The mailings are typically handled by you while they keep tabs on your release by calling the music director once a week to find out where it is in rotation and how many plays it has received. It's great news that the days of sending multiple CDs at once are past. Promoting your music on college radio. Before you consider promoting your release on college radio, you have to understand how college radio works. First, there are laid down rules and regulations for DJs, but they are rarely followed. Most shows don't have serious themes, aren't taken seriously, or aren't even listened to. College radio has a library or room full of CDs and records. Almost every day, musicians send promotional or demo CDs or releases, but they can't all be listened to. The most important thing is, you can't hear college radio on any FM or AM radio waves. Sometimes they stream their shows online, but don't save them or put them in an archive. So generally speaking, college radio is not broadcast on the radio. FCC licenses are very expensive and take a lot of work to keep up for a small station run by students. How to actually benefit from college radio. One, play a gig at a college or university. Go play at a college if you want to get a lot of people to hear your music. Some college radio hosts or DJs are in charge of bringing live music to campus for events. They typically may book multiple shows per semester with all kinds of music from the local area and from touring bands. In one way or another, college students love to have fun, so they need bands to bring on the rave. The radio station also has money to put up posters and flyers about these shows, so if you play at a college, people will know about you and your music. This is a more guaranteed way of getting more attention compared to your demo being streamed at a college radio station. Number two, use a college studio to record. Some colleges have pretty up-to-date recording studios built right in. College studios would record your music for less than any professional studio would charge. A college recording studio would take pride in their own recording and would be more than happy to feature your music in their radio show. This is a trick that is shockingly underused. There may be other promotional opportunities that may be open to you if you choose to use a college recording studio such as being featured in the college blog and social media pages. Three, stop by, say hi. This could be one of the best pieces of advice I can give. I can't stress it enough, in fact. The best way to use any of the above resources is to know someone who works there. Stop by the station when you get to campus. Tell everyone and anyone about yourself. Hang out, watch one or two shows. This could really change everything. What you need to know about commercial airplay. Most people in the U.S. listen to commercial radio with regular rotation. On these stations, the DJs have no control over what songs are played unless, in the case of a smaller station, where the DJ is also the program director. So the biggest mistake you can make is to hand off your release to a DJ at a commercial station, asking him to play it on his show. The DJ can't say no, and he or she probably won't tell you that only the program director can approve regular rotation. The DJ will just say, okay, in an attempt to be polite. Behind the scenes of radio airplay. Good songs don't make their way to other stations by magic. Every song or syndicated show you hear on commercial radio with regular rotation is there because of layers of marketing and promotion. The song you hear is the one that made it. It beat out the other hundreds of songs that were pitched that week. What you don't hear are the countless phone calls, faxes, trade ads, personal meetings, consultant recommendations, call out research, and other things that were done to get the station to play the record. The owners of the station make it a rule that the DJs have to make it sound like they chose the music themselves. 
you don't have to be signed to get on radio. Being signed is only a signal to the stations that the basic marketing practices are going to be done right. If you have the budget, you can duplicate the marketing practices of larger labels, provided you know how to go about it. The marketing prowess of a $5 million budget will give you the same exposure as a signed artist. Do not fake request calls. Asking your family and friends to call radio stations to request your song won't hurt, but your time is better spent doing other things, like inviting people to your gigs. Stations know which calls are real and which are bands and their friends. They even have consultants and seminars which help them discern these calls. Do you need a distributor to be played on radio? Luckily, if you are a Verse One client, your distribution is already taken care of. And if you require radio promotion, you can make the request on our portal. However, radio size matters. If you have an effective radio campaign, are doing amazing gigs in their city, or are getting great results from college or specialty mixed show performances, this shouldn't be too much of a stumbling block for smaller commercial regular rotation stations in smaller markets. Yet, major networks won't take on a project without distribution. And you can't even get started on the little networks until you finish the major ones. Can you get on-air radio without local gigs? The answer to this question is dependent on the size of the desired radio. The inability to book gigs is a major setback for any radio station. But in less competitive markets, other promotional methods such as press releases, sales, and non-commercial airplay can help make up the difference. Working with independent radio promoters. In order to get your release on the radio, you might choose to hire a professional radio promoter. Here are a few things to think about that will help you have the best chance of success. The biggest problem with this method is that if you choose the wrong person to promote your artist and get bad results, you can't just start over. That's the end. Especially if CDs were sent to the stations the wrong way. At those stations, in most cases, that CD is now redundant, so you can't play it again until you have a new release. Please note that this only applies to airplay promoters, not a club or booking promoter. Understanding radio promoters. Using a friend. A common option for artists who are just starting out is using a friend or a friend of a friend. Friends who don't have much experience will sometimes offer to help artists get on the radio for free or for cheap. This is fine, as long as you put them to good use, like by getting them to help with the mailing. If you're doing college radio, somewhere between 20 and 30 stations, they could also make some calls. If they try to call commercial radio, they will probably mess up after just a couple of weeks and forget about being able to make it to the charts or reports. Hustler staff promoters. Staff promoters at major labels will sometimes offer to help you out on the side for a fee. They say they will make some calls for you on their days off or over the weekend. If their company finds out, they won't be able to do it, or they'll be too busy on their days off to do it. In either case, it is not in their best interests. PR people. People who work in public relations sometimes offer to get an artist on the radio. But don't get PR and airplay mixed up. Publicity has nothing to do with a real radio campaign. They are two different methods with different people to contact, lead times, terms, call frequency, and so on. Most of the time, a person who is good at one thing is bad at the other. This is why labels always have different departments. Radio people. Sometimes, people who work at the station will be hired to promote an artist because they know what the station wants. This sounds good, but in reality, taking calls at the station and making calls are two very different things. People who work at radio stations don't make good promoters until they've been trained by a label or an independent company. Big clients. Promoters' most common way to sell you something is to say that they have worked with some big artist and that this will help you. Find out what they mean when they say worked. Were they the only ones who put that artist on the charts? Most likely not. More likely than not, the promoter was just working with a label or another promoter, or even worse, he or she was just an assistant. Again, they won't say that they weren't the main person who promoted it. You'll have to ask the artist or whoever's in charge of the artist. What to look for in a radio promoter? Ease of contact. 
If your promoter answers the phone each time you call, that's a good sign, but others never do. If you thought it was hard to get in touch with them before you hire them, huh, wait until they have your money. Also, be careful if they say they give clients and potential clients a different phone number than the one they give to the stations. Most likely, you'll never be able to call that person when you need them. Reports. Well-organized promoters will give you reports because they have to. Without a report, you won't be able to know what's going on with your airplay each week, and neither will anyone else, like stores, papers, clubs, etc. Office. If the promoter doesn't have an office, even a small one, this means he is probably working from home and you'll be competing with things like sleep, TV, neighbors, dinner, etc. Assistance. A promoter needs assistance if they work with more than one type of music at the same time or if they do any college radio. The phone calls have to be made and no one person can call more than 150 stations a week. Do reports, faxes, emails, and talk to you when you call. College radio. Even if you do high-level commercial radio, you should think about college for every campaign. College radio isn't too expensive, and you can make charts and reports that look good to show to the retailers, the press, and clubs. Emails. You might get excited about email, but remember that since it's free, every artist on the planet sends them to radio stations and every email has the same look. So if you want to make a good project, you have to use faxes and phone calls, since most artists can't afford them. And that is why you will stand out. Any good promoter will have a list of clients they have worked with in the past. You want to find a promoter whose projects are on the same level as yours, independently. A list of big clients doesn't necessarily mean that the promoter is better, since a promoter who is used to getting a lot of help from major labels, staff promoters, national tours, retail promotions, advertising, etc., won't get any of these things for your project. You need a promoter who can handle independent projects like yours. Get your work done. The major label promoter wasn't the one who worked on the big projects to begin with. They were probably just office workers or people who delivered mail, or they were lying most of the time. It happens very often. Ask the artist himself or herself.